down jacket. You know, just stuff sacked. Every time I'm like, how did it all fit? Hey, Stephen Bugner here with Eric and Bronwyn, and we're here at the Denali Hostel and Cabins on the Parks Highway. And uh, I met these guys there uh, cycle touring through Alaska, and I just want to sit down and, and kind of talk to them about their experiences here. And uh, well, first we can take a look at what they're riding, um, and maybe a little bit about some special uh, precautions to take uh, with cycling through Alaska. Yeah. Um, so yeah, big part of bike touring is the bikes. <laughs> so um, I'll start with my bike here. It's kind of uh, just a standard old steel frame mountain bike. Yeah, what, you got the 26 inch tires 26 there. 26 inch Yeah, I got tires. one of these. Yeah. Um, you know, it's about a 2.0 wide tire with the Schwabel GT Marathons, like excellent tire. But this is a Nishiki japan made bike double butted steel frame like really just strong yeah I, I think steel's good for long for touring it's more comfortable and yeah yeah i i preference it because of strength and like welding yeah if anything were to go wrong you can weld steel a little easier um and stronger yeah so and the this rim is an 80 like an 80 1983 oh wow mountain bike oh wow okay <laughs> yeah with like all original dra uh -huh. it's all original besides just, brakes yeah and you cleaned up all the cables and housing. okay yeah i just had a yeah replaced cables uh -huh. and housing and and so, the rim brakes which rim are pretty easy brakes. to easier to um to repair if needed so yeah, okay yeah. so yeah that's uh that's the my bike and bag wise it's a lot of revlet design alaskan made yep uh, nice great bags and then rei's kind of gotten on the train and you know they're doing these snack feeder bags and this frame bag is rei okay uh revlet design saddle bags but you know this is all kind of first generation revlet design and it's been really strong this front taco system super strong and lasting long time um, so you have rear panniers or no you panniers, no no panniers just the rack and we've just been strapping bags on top of the rack here okay we tried to keep it as light and backpack okay bike pack style as possible but if i'm not mistaken you have a a pretty big camera and a tripod too so that makes it even more difficult it makes yeah. it heavy okay yeah <laughs> okay cool. yeah yeah so i ride a surly troll um and it's a steel frame as well double butted this is made for touring so you can see all the different points of connection um here and the forks and uh we we really didn't want to do the the back rack and we were trying to avoid a, a rack a rack and just trying to just to avoid do bike trouble. packing style uh-huh just so. because of the bumpy washboard roads uh the rack we've heard just like this point becoming loose and then breaking snapping and oh really but we've had no trouble we've been okay we've just had to tighten them almost every day okay after a long ride on dirt washboard roads yeah it they definitely do come gets loose, loose. And I think if you don't tighten them, you know, you'll, you'll shear, you'll shear these uh, bolts or, or possibly even the rack. Mm -hmm. And I've got 2.5 inch wide tires, okay. 26 inch. And that's an issue you're saying mostly on off-roading or gravel roads. Yeah, that, that jarring of the washboarding. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm strapped up with a lot of Revlet design too. Saddle nice. bag, frame bag. The nice. frame bag is where I keep the precious camera. Okay. Um, so this is a, an extra side pocket, and then on the inside, on the other side, it opens up to this really spacious pocket here. Okay. And so I put my camera in there with the water bottle and my tool bag. Okay. So it actually, and it it's tight, so I fill the whole space, and then I strap my tripod on top of the frame here. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's been working pretty good. It's it's pretty slim. Um, and then you know, Revlon in the front here, and the REI snack bags, and 
Uh, we've got two pouches here in the front on the forks. And these bolts are actually really strong. I've only had to tighten them once in our whole riding so far. So that's been really awesome. Even with those bags weighted out, uh, those, those racks have held on really well. So, so one thing, just making sure everything's tight every day before you set out is a big yeah. uh, thing yeah. to look out for. Yeah. Okay. And kind of, we've been also noticing we need to help each other, especially with the back rack of checking, making sure the other person is tight, looking like nothing's going to fall off. Uh -huh. um, that's a big thing, helping each other and looking at each other's bikes while we're riding, because you can't always see everything on your bike. Uh huh. Definitely. And has anything gone wrong, or uh, you, you have know, any funny stories, know. or? <laughs> the anticipation of like things going wrong was way worse than what's actually gone wrong. Yeah. Really, it's been pretty smooth sailing here. The like, only during the last. The only yeah. thing I can think of is because we were just I was just saying how we need to look at each other's bikes is the sandals fell off at one point. They're strapped on the back yeah. rack, and we had gone about three miles on some hilly road uh -huh. until we realize oh shoot the sandals and we start pedaling back we're like okay it's probably just right down this road it like, right down this it was three miles back uh -huh. <laughs> down these pretty Some steep hills climb. so after oh, really? that we've been really we found them yeah <laughs> wow and that's the only thing that's really like gone wrong okay it's yeah. been pretty smooth not gone <laughs> <laughs> um totally. yeah i know li living in alaska I kind of have gotten rescued by just random people around. Has anybody, have you experienced any kind of hospitality here in Alaska? Or? Unbelievably yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we've been blown away by people's How generous. Yeah, generosity and hospitality. That's cool. Interest in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And not, uh, yeah. We've made some connections through, really through one friend we knew. It kind of led to a few different connections and okay. we were invited to stay at a couple cabins out of the rain and um these people are friends we want to stay in contact with them it's been yeah. really awesome we've been so surprised by the people we've met inviting us into their homes like we're family and friends and, yeah and we just met them and you know then rain comes in and we end up staying two days and, yeah and we're like family they we They're floated like, no the problem. golconda river with a, a guy from uh gakona uh he he took us in with his family and you know then one day he's like you, you guys want to float the Colcana River today and we're like yeah <laughs> yeah that's awesome these experiences is what makes traveling special yeah. and um the people yeah it, it's cool I, I remember I was bike touring in Nova Scotia and I was solo and I met this family doing a riverboat crossing and they're like oh come to our house we're having a barbecue and then I end up staying the night and cool. You know, you have a hot shower and a, yeah. a beer in your hand and a barbecue. And yeah, and so, good uh, company and, yeah. and people that are genuinely yeah. excited for your journey, which yeah. is so good. I, I think the bicycles make you approachable, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and people want to talk and learn about your journey, so it's it's a cool way to travel. Yeah. And it, it, it slows you down um, traveling through the landscape and you're experiencing everything which is the good and the bad i mean when it's raining you're getting wet yeah, and you have a different appreciation and the mosquitoes and oh, yeah. any what else can you tell us fatigue yeah uh, the, dirty <laughs> dusty the mental challenge really along with fatigue but i mean i've caught myself pedaling up some steep hills after a long section of riding and really asking myself like should i stop can i just get off the bike now and you can't you know I, it's like he's riding in front of me just got to keep going you got to keep going and then 10 minutes later I'm like yeah I'm crashing it yeah. so it's like getting over those mental hurdles has yeah. been pretty big too definitely yeah, yeah mental mental challenges mm -hmm. definitely and it's been a complete surprise just how far a bike can take you yeah. pretty easily to yeah. you know just pedal away and it'll the miles add up yeah quick just tell us about some of the places you visit in alaska uh you've you're, you're not strictly doing like this it's not about uh the destination or i mean you've you've right. been hiking you've been yeah. uh rafting that's really cool um 
And so we're just what places in Alaska have you seen? Yeah, so we got in pretty early to Alaska in the Anchorage, May 7th. We showed up with our bikes, packed up. Uh, we built them in the airport. And you then flew from Nevada from, or California? From Nevada, from Reno okay. to Anchorage. Uh, with Alaska Airlines, it's $30 to bring a bike if it's boxed up. So that was awesome. kind of like... Yeah, that's cheap. Put yeah. all the yeah. packs in the box with yeah. the bike. And we got invited up by a friend uh, and he has a property in McCarthy and we've been wanting to go to McCarthy for a long time. So we're like, yeah, we got the invitation. So we're like, yeah, we're going. So that's what jump started the Alaska trip. Yeah. And then we're like, okay, so how are we going to do this? And we want to make like a full on trip of, of it and see Alaska. And I've never been to Alaska before this and it's always been at the top of my list and especially hearing Eric's stories because he's been here before. Okay. And yeah. we're like, okay, if we're going to go up there, we got to just make it a long trip. So two months is yeah, kind of how we planned cool. it. We're like, let's sandwich our visit at our friends with some bike touring because yeah. how are we that's see something we've been really wanting to do. And yeah, travel by bike is just such a cool way to see a new area. Yeah, and you, you have jobs you can kind of take extended time off of. Yeah, and luckily we, we work hard and save up and you yeah. know to do things like this yeah. <laughs> modestly and so then our money goes further yeah and, and we're able to yeah do take these big adventures and not spend too much money and not cool. need too much money yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's been nice to work sort of seasonally and simple with our travel and vacation and exploration and I mean that's we're working so that we can do those things so yeah, we don't exactly. want the work to take up all of our time yeah have you done other bike tour other bike tours before uh, I have a yeah. couple nothing yeah. crazy long okay a um, few different styles of like in Costa Rica I took a bike ride uh, it was about probably like two weeks just cruising hostel to hostel uh, I've done some bike touring in Tahoe and just short kind of mountain bike touring and we did some bike packing touring. in Tahoe as well more uh, not single track but more just dirt road and uh, kind of bike a little packing. more backcountry bike pack style more so um, mm -hmm. not too many long cross-country tours or anything but uh, we've been kind of uh, visualizing more of those yeah. um, more long distance touring uh -huh. and uh, after a lot of mountain biking as well in Tahoe it's like okay let's like get on our bikes for a while yeah <laughs> yeah like a mode of transportation and it's it's cheap and free and easy we don't have to pay yeah. for gas right now which accessible is insane. yeah you can yeah. access more places yes um yes. Yeah. so you started in McCarthy and then you uh you came up the well, it's 60 some miles on dirt road out of McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. That in one day. It's pretty rough road. <laughs> one, one day. Yeah. Nice. That was the roughest road we've had so far. Okay. Which I guess is great that that was what we started with, because now everything since then. Okay. Been like, oh, this is. And that was bad. that was pretty scenic and recommended. Oh yeah. Just just tough. Yeah. Just yeah. the washboarding was uh -huh. tough, where you can't get too much speed going, or yeah. else you're just bouncing around yeah. yeah so it's kind of like a slow grind move slow <laughs> make plenty of stops and just like yeah cruise, uh -huh. like, uh, you know a beach cruiser would be the best bike for that <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay and then you went along the copper river up uh, the richardson highway mm -hmm. uh to the denali highway and then came across the denali highway yeah mm -hmm. from yeah. Jackson to camp well yeah. We well, stopped in Kenny Lake area and we stayed in that area which was a, a cool town. Um, yeah. I mean it, there's it's a very small town but as far as the the community, the sense of the people that are living there and what they're doing and how they're living. Kenny Lake that is? Yes. Okay. And that's along the Denali Highway? It's uh, actually on the Richardson, on the Richardson. Uh, before Glen Allen. Yeah. South of Glen Allen. Oh yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's actually the cutoff to go toward Valdez if you're coming from. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then, uh, yeah, the Denali Highway got onto the Parks Highway here, and here you are at the uh, about 13 miles south of Denali National Park, and you're headed into the National Park. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Today we're gonna ride up there. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I've done uh, some. Uh, Base myself at Igloo. 
and done some day day riding on the mountain bike in the park. Um, and yeah, there's thing about Denali National Park. It's great for wildlife, so keep an eye out for uh, caribou this time of year. Definitely yeah. bear. Um, Hoping to see as much wildlife as golden possible. eagles, maybe. Yeah. yeah, could be fox, lynx. A lot of cool. animal that I, you know, thought about seeing. I thought of the bigger animals and yeah. we saw two very different fox. Yeah. Red fox and then nice an arctic man. fox. Okay, nice. And that was really cool. Ptarmigan. Yeah. We love the wildlife, so it's like we were kind of like, yes, come come out and say hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, our, a big anticipation for coming to Alaska and camping and uh, bike touring was like bears. That was like number one question. What what about the bears? And I, you know, you shouldn't go. You're gonna, you know, the bears will attack you. It's like a lot of people were concerned. There, we haven't. We've seen one bear. And that was at Exit Glacier. Probably that was May 13th. Mm -hmm. It was before Still the park snowy. opened. Yeah. So we rode the closed road in, which was really cool. We had the park to ourselves, but then we post hole through like three feet of snow to go to oh, Exit wow. Glacier. And on our way out, we saw a grizzly bear and a cub. Mm -hmm. And that's the only bears we've seen. And really, not very much sign of a bear, like yeah. scat or... Um, a little bit in McCarthy, but um, yeah. otherwise, yeah, we are like, where's all the bears? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And bears, something you definitely need to be aware of and know bear safety. And are you carrying bear spray? Yes, yes. bear yeah. spray. So We're carry bear right spray. In, in here, we cold it, so it's just like easy access. And sometimes the noise of your bike can, you, you want to give the bear notice so you're not spooking the bear. Yeah. Totally. Um, if you're talking or maybe have a, some people have bells on their bike when they're mountain biking. Um, it's it's good on the, in the national park, you can see most of the time you can see on both sides of the of the road so there's not going to be a bear hiding in the brush on the side mm -hmm. but um yeah it's you shouldn't let bear deter you from a trip um but it's something you need to be aware of exactly. definitely and that's why we were like well we we understand the concern with bears and we want to be safe and we we care about the bears environment as well and like Eric said earlier, sustainability is a huge part of it. So we really were just, let's be bear aware and bear safe and bear prepared, but also we, we wanna see them. We don't yeah. wanna not see them. <laughs> yeah, and one way to do that is you have a bear canister there. You yeah. could show us that. This bear can. does a lot of things, but it, in, a lot, in terms of what you're talking about, it, it prevents bears from getting at human food and then you have troubles with bears once they get human food, but mm -hmm. it protects you and uh, and the bears and um, yeah, basically a, you can show us. Yeah, so this closes up and the bear just can't really like he's not gonna be able to pick it up and run away with it. You know, yeah, they he can't, can't bite it, it, can't get into it. So they'll smack it around and you know smell it, but they'll realize that they can't get yeah. anything. Out Very of it. typical for backcountry in Alaska, whether you're hiking. Um, or or cycling. Yeah, but and you have to have these in the national park, I believe. Yes, they're required. Yeah, for camping. Um, but yeah, this is our personal one. You know, this has been kind of the challenge to fit this on the bike. It's like an awkward shape, and it kind of slips around. Yeah, it and took we, some trials. Yeah, we tried a few different ways, but we found out that the best way was in this uh, front taco. Oh, interesting. Okay. Just like that. Okay. And it straps into this Revlet design front taco system. And it just straps right in and it's stayed secure, not slipped around and just sits right in there. Okay, in the past I've put it on the back here and then strapped it, but, but by no yeah. means is that the best way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's just what I figured out in, in my setup, but uh, everyone's yeah. gonna have to find what's comfortable. And I'm sure you've adjusted some things as you've been going and figured out, yeah, yeah, what's better where. Right, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's been challenging uh, here in Alaska just to carry enough food and find like good sources of food so we tried to do like all bulk and use like our cotton bags to buy a bunch of couscous in bulk and just fill these with couscous or lentils or rice noodles and then trail uh, mix anything that we could get that would have been in a plastic bag but we found it to put in our own bag we went yeah, for it a little healthier food and then you know 
ever since Anchorage and Palmer area, we've been away from big supermarkets that have bulk and like that quality food. So it's been challenging to find uh, good markets that have food uh, in bulk, good food, dry mm -hmm. food, and not so much plastic or junk food. Yeah, so I think one of the challenges in cycling in Alaska is um, uh, there's could be stretches without food um, and cyclists, you know, eat, eat a lot, yeah, <laughs> burn a lot of calories. Um, yeah. So resupply <laughs> and and getting actually all your food into one bear bag is well, a huge challenge. And that yeah. we're only down to this because we're essentially almost out of food. Yeah, we have had been stuffing our food in our other bags and then when we stop to camp we put it all in one bag and hang that extra bag yeah and i think stuff like uh yeah, dried yeah. macaroni or something yeah i don't know if that's right. such a bear threat right um, really. or like the beef jerky is in here yeah you, know? you definitely <laughs> want yeah <laughs> anything with an odor you definitely yeah. want in there yeah mm -hmm. the things that like if worst case scenario the bear does get to it and like steals all your food you kind of want like yeah the stuff that you wouldn't care about as much um and are also least harmful to the like bear like soap maybe could be like hung in a bag or a toothpaste or yeah like the noodles dry couscous or... or dry noodles that don't have that scent mm -hmm. would probably be safer if you didn't have enough space in your bear bin to like hang those things instead of like hanging the beef jerky mm -hmm. yeah duh, that's a that's or a tease the, the smoked <laughs> salmon <laughs> Yeah, no, you Not want that. You want that stuff in the bear bag. Yeah. Well, cool. Any other kind of advice or tips or unexpected things or something people wouldn't think of when they're coming to Alaska to cycle tour? Yeah. Uh, fuel for your stove. We ran out of fuel canister, so then like refueling your type of stove, your cooking, um, gas for that, which is everything: our hot water, our, our coffee, or tea cooking any kind of food that's not just like crackers and dry meat or something. I think the best option for here in Alaska is those MSR stoves that use any sort of gas. Exactly, yeah. Like an international stove. Yeah, good advice. We yeah. thought about doing that and we decided against it. Um, and now looking back, it probably, yeah, that would be the way to go next time. There's a gas tank right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, refuel, all right. Yeah, yeah. Refuel when nobody's looking. Yeah. <laughs> we're out of. We ran out of gas with 30 miles to go to get to here. Oh no! And, so we uh, couldn't wake up and like make coffee. Yeah. yeah we woke up and, and rode a dry. 20 miles on an empty stomach. Dry breakfast. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. We were essentially out of food as well. Fuel. So that was that was tough. Um, you know, and then the conditions of like dust in that glacial silt especially in mccarthy and like the chitna area that glacial dust gets everywhere mm -hmm. like for in your gear and like keeping things clean and lubed like we've lubed our chain as much as possible having um, a little cleaning brush would be good oh yeah like an extra toothbrush or something or, yeah 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 um, a little bit of so your hands are just getting totally yeah, out. those like uh, plastic medical gloves. You could. Um, I know it's more waste, but it's it saves right. your hands. And yeah, your, and you your could grips. reuse them. So you don't want to get your yeah. grips all Greasy. oily. Yeah, we have like you know I've got two shirts, one pair of pants. You know, very minimal clothing. So as soon as your hands get greased, then like you use your clothes. And yeah, then you're like you're, you're greased. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We also pretty much have everything in a dry bag of some sort. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of small sill roll top dry bags for smaller things. And then we have bigger ones for like our sleeping bags, stuff sacks that are dry bags. Essentially everything is in a dry bag so that if it does start raining, we just have to, you know, tuck one or two things back into the dry bag and we're good. Right. Instead of having to stop and put everything in just be prepared for rain at any time and that yeah. i think has helped with dust getting into our stuff it's good well. good strategy yeah yeah the, the dust protection like the most unpredictable it goes from sunny and 70 degrees and like really hot in the sun to clouds roll in and it's raining and windy and you're freezing mm -hmm. so it's having <laughs> that complete range of gear from yeah. down and like winter gear to 
stay out of the sun kind of gear. Yeah, I think that's super good advice. I mean, I could go hiking in Alaska in the summer and I've got a backpack full of uh, layers to put on because it can weather can change like you're saying so yeah, that's great advice fast, yeah. uh yeah different uh different layers and... cool okay so uh yeah they're headed into into the national park so they'll say goodbye to denali hostel and cabins here where you've been staying for the last two nights and it's yeah, it's pretty a comfortable great here. Spot here. Yeah. yeah, some hot showers. If you're coming to Denali, <laughs> hot showers. This is a really great place. Yeah, yeah. right, right here by the creek and uh, nice cabins and dorm beds. Really good so. food around here. Yeah, yeah nice. Uh, this let's call it Carlo Creek area. It's a great place to stop. So yeah, yeah. I prefer this area of Denali. So. Yeah, we've loved it. Okay. Cool, so just tell us uh, where can we find out more about your journey mm -hmm. and uh, where to find you online. Uh, and Instagram is probably where we're updating the most right now. Um, Eric's Instagram is more updated than mine. Uh, mine is more for photography and I've kind of been focusing on just putting my professional work there. Uh, so you can find mine at Bronwyn underscore Photog. Um, and Eric's is his name, Eric underscore Pratt. Yeah, E-R-I-C underscore Pratt, P-R-A-T-T. And I also have a nonprofit that I'm starting that's called At Down to Earth. And it's a, a nonprofit for like building community and sustainability and recreation, environmental education, kind of starting a trend towards living, you know, with the land um, and yeah, becoming more sustainable and connected. This bike tour has been really inspiring for both my photography and for the nonprofit as well. Just everything we've seen has been really encouraging for us to continue in those directions. Yeah. Big personal missions are like sustainability, and that's a huge reason why we choose bikes. Uh, and back to the Very cool. Yeah, and uh, check out Bronwyn's photography. I spent some time on her website last night checking it out. So very, very cool images there. So, um, shoving and filling the space. Balling up. This bag started waterproof, but it's kind of lost. It's waterproof. Oh, and, really? So I just use use it as you know, I would, rain gear storage. Yeah. I would put everything in dry bags anyway. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. Totally. So, yeah, that. I mean, I get it to the point where it's full. Because like, keep your cuffs nice and tight, make you really visible uh, on the road. Super light. Water filter, purification, tablets for backup. Like that's a pretty bulky item actually, like one of our biggest items just for yeah. water filter. Gotta filter the water and then like the back like spare batteries which we don't really need because we don't use our headlamps or anything. Yeah, headlamps in the summer in Alaska. Like, oh, like now that I have them, what do I do with them? I'm like, well, we might as well just keep them. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's rags, like super nice to have. Spare parts, spare cables, spare pinch brake pads, you know, I mean, really more than we need. Yeah. But in case like a cable frays. And, yeah, probably a, a good site for learn about else is bikepacking.com. Yeah. You might have used that site. Yeah, it's yeah. Got a, tells you what you might need to take, uh, spare stuff. P cord so. for hanging food or yeah. for drying. Yeah. Gators have worked actually really nice for keeping our the water off of our feet and keeping keeping road grime out of our oh, yeah. out of our shoes. Like these aren't waterproof, so just Gators over these, over the shoes, help quite a bit. 
and then you know it helps you not get tangled up with your yeah yeah with your legs and that's like that's the frame bag this rei frame bag is super watertight nice yeah like really strong huh. zipper you actually lube this zipper oh really? yeah you're like you're supposed to lube it so it's pretty <laughs> like four huh All these full lace straps are so good and these are Jensen USA uh, and I just mounted it with you know clamps here on the, fo on the fork because I don't have attachment points so I just uh, used, okay. used a bunch of tape yeah and then just clamp clamp this on and it's it's bomber it's not huh. gonna go anywhere I was a little worried about these like slipping around and like pushing into the spokes but it they haven't gone anywhere this is stove and pot stove kit uh, we don't have gas in here but gas pots two pots stove and there used to be gas in here and you know some towels we're using like towelettes instead of uh, paper towels or anything like that this is an old backpacking brain oh yeah from my yeah. old Kelty backpack and I've just it turns into like it a there. hip hip belt yeah right? that's really useful to and I when just, you go on day hikes or something I just put it on top of that bear bin and yeah that's a really good idea strap these around it's worked great yeah sometimes the stuff you make is better than like the stuff you buy <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah and you're like well maybe I could like manufacture <laughs> something like that where it would be really sweet if bike packing bags could come off the bike and yeah. go onto your back yeah, I think easier it, or onto your waist. You yeah, know? a lot of these gear companies start that way. You're just like, yeah. what would work out well yeah. here and then start manufacturing it. Right, yeah. yeah, add a strap here. Yeah, exactly, so it's hmm. been great. And you gotta have the feather there. Gotta have you the feather. Got, you gotta have a feather. <laughs> Found that feather, I was like, that is definitely coming yeah, with us. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, that was from McCarthy Road. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it helps with my being a little lighter weight. <laughs> Take some of the load off. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, have a great journey and be safe and uh, enjoy Alaska. Thanks, Steve. Thank you so much.